Tyler, um, and our project was to uh, control a RC helicopter using motion control. So, for our project, we wanted to take this uh, RC helicopter that I had that uh, communicates over uh, infrared light and then um, control it using this little um, three axis gyroscope and accelerometer that we had that we used for project three. Um, and so, specifications we based on the movement of the the um, motion controller, we can control the different the different things for the helicopter, the throttle to pitch the yaw. Okay, so here's our hardware layout. We have the MPU, which uses I squared C to communicate. Um, then we have an uh, infrared LED, which is what we actually send the information to the helicopter over. And we also have a button that we press that um, actually enables the output, so that way we don't have the helicopter constantly have to fly away when we're testing the um, And so the main difficulty of the project was to figure this out, which is the actual communication speed. We have the controller but we didn't actually know exactly how it communicated. So we hooked the controller up to the <coughs> radio, and we were able to see three specific uh, output patterns that it was making. This one, which is like a four millisecond uh, high and then one millisecond low, which we call the header because it appears only at the very beginning of each message. Um, and then a one and a zero, arbitrarily called those one and zero, obviously you couldn't tell which one had to be which. Um, and then looking at the individual bits that it was sending in the message, we, by moving the controller around, we were able to tell, figure out what each of these chunks of the message were related to in terms of sending to the helicopter. Um, main problem that we had there is these six bits at the very end. Um, did a redundancy check to make sure that the, map, the, the bits that it was sending in the message were actually correct, that they didn't have some sort of error on transmission. And so actually figuring out those bits took a bit of work, and we couldn't figure them out completely. We ended up having to uh, limit our controls just to um, the <coughs> cardinal directions and then very center on the control stick. Um, and then we also have our program flow layout, which basically we, we power on, we start up both the sensors and the timer interrupts, which are used to control the message output. And then we pull, waiting for the, the button to be pressed. When the button's pressed, we go to full throttle for a little while, just to get it like off the ground. And then it sits there just checking the motion the helicopter based on that motion control of the inputs. So as we said before, we uh, put an oscilloscope on the controller to see the message that was receiving and then replicated through the Arduino. Then this um, the MP takes I square C and that's what we use to send out the signal. that we could figure out for the uh, redundancy check. So we were able to control those fully all the way from zero up to their max level for both of those. Um, the controller positions we couldn't actually figure out fully, so it's stuck to either fully on forward, fully on back, or centered, and then the same thing for left or right. Um, and then the motion controls, the way that it works is you hold it, you hold it like this, um, moving it forward or back like this causes the helicopter to pitch forward or back like this. 
uh, rotating it the, this way will cause the helicopter to rotate this way, and then moving it up or down will make it uh, increase the draw or decrease it, make it move up or down. Um, and then I guess it's it. um, unfortunately we had a rapid unplanned disassembly during testing and we lost one of the gears that drives one of the propellers so this thing actually can't fly at the moment um, but what we can show you is sending data over to the thing we can, we can spin this body propeller and so we'll show you that um, we press the button to activate it Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? 